Hello guys, welcome back to another video. I'm out on my run today and I just wanted to tell you about my new heart rate monitor, the Polar OH1 Plus. So in this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about monitoring heart rate during running and also why I wanted this particular heart rate monitor. So stay tuned. So I think a good place to start was probably to talk a little bit about why monitoring your heart rate during running training can be beneficial. Now, I definitely don't think it's essential, but I do, do think it can help. It's a good way of getting some feedback during or after your training as to how hard you've worked in that session. So the way I like to use it and the way I find it most beneficial is on my easy runs. So on my easy days, I, I run because I want to recover from the harder days, but I still want to benefit from having that time on the feet and building an aerobic base. So on my easy days, I have a sort of upper limit of a heart rate that I want to be at to ensure that I'm not pushing too hard and I'm staying in, in that eight, those easy zones of my heart rate. So that's where I find monitoring heart rate the most beneficial. So when monitoring heart rate, it can be quite useful to use um, heart rate zones. So if you think about your heart rate, so you have, a, you have a resting heart rate and you have a maximum heart rate. So you can actually divide that period between from your resting to your maximum into five different zones. And what those zones do is, is give you an idea how hard you're working and also what systems in the body you're using. So for example, on my easy days, I, I like to keep my heart rate in zones one or two. So as you can see from a table that I'll put up on the screen, that's roughly roughly 60 to 70% of my maximum heart rate. So I don't want to go above that. So I'm staying in those first two zones. I say roughly because everyone's hearts are different. Everyone heart, everyone's heart rates are different. So your resting heart rate is going to be different to my resting heart rate and your maximum heart rate is going to be different. But to work out heart rate zones to a bit more of an accurate level, you also need to you also need to know your lactic threshold heart rate so it can get a bit more complicated but luckily a lot of watches a lot of gps watches these days work out your heart rate zones for you but if you wanted to look into it and get a, get a better better heart rate zone um, estimations then i recommend going to um, 8020 endurance matt fitzgerald's website reading up about it a little bit more there's also a calculator on there that you can use to, to work out your heart rate zones and delve into that subject a little bit more and I will link that down below for anyone that's interested. So my history with heart rate monitors started with a heart rate chest strap uh, several years ago. And, you know, I can't fault the accuracy of a heart rate chest strap. They're, they're a really good bit of kit and they're actually still considered really the, the best, or should I say the most accurate way to monitor an athlete's heart rate. However, I do find them a little bit uncomfortable. And I was finding when I was going out on runs that I was having to readjust the chest strap quite a lot. And I was very aware that I was wearing one. So they weren't ideal in that respect. And then I got the Phoenix, uh, Garmin Phoenix 6, which comes with a built-in wrist optical sensor heart rate monitor. Now I wasn't expecting it to be very good, um, having read a bit of the research beforehand, it does suggest that the accuracy is, a, is, is not great with the wrist-based technology. And that is the case, the wrist-based heart rate monitors um, have, have got a long way to go really to, to be as accurate as a chest strap. However, saying that, I did find it a little bit better than I was expecting and I found 70% of the time my heart rate was probably um, being recorded correctly. I had quite a good sense of, of what heart rate I was running at having run with a chest strap for so long. But then there was that other 30% where it was completely off the mark and therefore, yeah, the wrist-based technology in these watches I don't think can be trusted in my opinion.
So I was really in search of something that was both accurate and comfortable. Bear with me. And that's where the Polar OH1 Plus comes in for me. It's actually very similar, almost if not identical technology to what's in the um, wrist-based devices when it comes to measuring heart rate. So it's an optical heart rate sensor. However, the design of the Polar OH1 Plus allows it to be positioned on the bicep or on the um, upper forearm, which allows for better, better contact with the skin and therefore improved accuracy. So a lot of, quite a few people have looked into how accurate the Polar OH1 Plus and these, these arm-based or upper arm-based monitors are and they're quite close in accuracy to heart rate monitors, heart, um, heart rate monitors, to chest monitors. They're not quite at the level of the accuracy of a, a chest strap but they are pretty damn close and that's good enough for me because it's also very comfortable to wear. So comfortable in fact that you forget that you're wearing it. There you are. So what's also great about the Polar OH1 Plus is that I can connect it to my watch uh, via AMP Plus or Bluetooth and it can also be connected to its own app as well so you can actually use it without without a watch. Now I probably won't use that func uh, function that often um, however I can see it being quite useful if I wanted to do you know um, a, a strength training or a weights workout where I don't want to be wearing a watch maybe it's a bit uncomfortable to be wearing a watch or I don't want to damage the watch when lifting weights so I can definitely see myself using it for that and it's nice to have that little added bonus but um, also what's also great is the fact that it is waterproof fully waterproof you can actually wear it swimming and you can even attach it onto your goggles where it can take your pulse from your temple which is pretty cool so where I do think it's going to be quite useful for me is wearing it during obstacle course racing so heart rate chest straps are definitely not ideal when it comes to obstacle course racing. I've never actually worn one during an OCR because I know what will happen. I'll be constantly readjusting and it'll be just falling down and be just annoying really. So I've never really monitored my heart rate during an obstacle course race. So this um, Polar OH1 Plus is going to be a good opportunity for me to see how high my heart rate stays during an obstacle course race. I'm guessing it's pretty high most of the time. So that's going to be really interesting. You know, I don't think it's going to be at all a problem wearing wearing a little strap on my upper arm shouldn't get in the way at all and has the added benefit of being waterproof so if they races take me through any water it's not a problem so i look forward to that so i'm really pleased with my new polar oh1 plus heart rate monitor and i'm really interested what do you guys use to monitor your heart rate or do you even use a heart rate monitor at all or do you just go off feel let me know in the comments below so i'm going to finish off my run get home get warm and then this afternoon i'm going to watch norris city i think yeah have a good day guys Take it easy, bye.